All right, and hopefully, Chanel, you can see on the screen what um, the title page. I can. All right, off you go. Thank you. Okay, 10 engaging activities for the languages classroom. We recognise the ongoing custodians of the lands and waterways where we work and live. We pay respect to elders past and present as ongoing teachers of knowledge, song lines and stories. We strive to ensure every Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander learner in New South Wales achieves their potential through education. The artwork you see on the screen is Duga Deep Water Darug, created by Sienna Cartwright from Nepean Creative and Performing Arts on Darug Country as part of the 2022 Schools Reconciliation Challenge. Sienna's artist notes state that water acts as a link between the physical and spiritual worlds. Water is used to communicate the saved value of life, the spiritual dimensions of purification, protection and healing. The artwork represents an Indigenous girl submersed in the healing qualities of the water and the significance of water to her culture and heritage. Reconciliation means living happily together in harmony. Welcome to our first statewide staff meeting for 2024. We hope that your year has started well and that you are enjoying implementing the Modern Languages K-10 syllabus. Today, we would like to share 10 engaging activities that you can use in your classrooms aligned with the syllabus. Most are very low in preparation, which makes them easy to implement into your programs. We have been inspired by the article 20 student engagement strategies for a captivating classroom, which is by Jackson Best from 3P Learning. He reminds us that our students aren't engaged by things, they're engaged by us. That's why the best and easiest ways to increase student engagement come from you. Just remember that even for activities that everyone loves, there are always situations in which that activity will not be a smash hit. Remember that you are the expert in your classroom and only you can determine whether an activity is a good fit for your classes. When considering activities to share with you, we considered student engagement, tasks that could be varied to suit all learners and used in different contexts and tasks that align with the new syllabus. Some strategies to help you choose activities that may be engaging in your context include connect learning to the real world, engage with your students' interests, use group work and collaboration, Encourage students to share work. Student choice and student voice. Mixed media and different text types. Get students moving. Scaffolding and feedback. Discovery and inquiry. Ask good questions. Thinking time. Shake things up. Friendly competition. Gamify learning and be personable and laugh together. Aligning with the Modern Languages K-10 syllabus, it is essential that we are engaging students through reinvigorated pedagogy and meaningful context. In the ideas we will share, we have aligned relevant syllabus outcomes to assist you with your planning and programming. We have also included variations to the activities to demonstrate how other outcomes could be addressed. A reminder that when you look at these activities, like the activities in our resources, they are just a sample and we encourage you to adjust them for your own context. Before we look at the activities, take a moment to revise the stage four outcomes on the screen. I'll just give you a couple of moments. And here are the stage five outcomes to revise. Of course, some of the activities we will present may also be modified to suit primary students or stage six students, as well as for other languages, such as classical languages or Aboriginal languages. As we unpack each activity, you will see the relevant outcome on the screen in the dark blue box as shown here. And over to number one, Chanel. Thank you. Now let's start with lost animal flyers. When teaching a unit that includes pets or animals, 
have you considered including lost animal flyers? By incorporating real world tasks like creating a lost dog flyer, students have a more immersive and practical learning experience, making language acquisition more meaningful and enjoyable. Creating a lost animal flyer can be beneficial in many ways, including language consolidation, students get practical experience using vocabulary, sentence structures, and language skills in a real world context. They can include descriptions, details about the name, age, and size of the animal. Cultural awareness. Designing a lost animal flyer involves understanding cultural nuances, which can contribute to cultural awareness and sensitivity. Students may need to consider how to convey information effectively in the target language within a specific cultural context. Authentic communication. The task requires students to communicate a specific message authentically. This helps them to develop their communication skills in the target language and gain confidence in expressing themselves in real life situations. Problem solving skills. Designing a lost animal flyer involves critical thinking and problem solving. Students must consider the most effective ways to convey information, making decisions about layout, language choice, and visual elements. Real world application. The lost animal flyer task provides a real world application of language skills. This practical use of language helps students see the relevance of what they are learning in the classroom to everyday situations. And presentation skills. Students need to understand and create the flyer using features of a lost animal flyer text type, including a bold heading, a picture, description of the animal and contact details for the owner. Students can design the flyer from scratch on paper or by using Canva or a similar website. You can distribute pictures and or performers to students to use or to, as an alternative. Here are a couple of variations to lost animal flyers. Have students complete a gallery walk to explore all of the flyers and have them ask a series of questions you have created. You could save time by pre-writing the questions based on the students in the class. For example, what is Joshua's dog's name? You could even write the questions in the target language, depending on the skills of your students. The questions could also be around feedback for students, such as which flyer is the most attention grabbing and why. Copy the flyers and distribute the flyers randomly to students. Students take on the role of the person who has located the animal and calls the number on the poster, which of course is the person who created the poster. Students discuss finding the pet and negotiating how to get it back to its owner. And finally, students use their flyer as a stimulus to be interviewed for the local lost and found segment on the radio. Students work in pairs with each taking the role of the journalist and the person looking for their lost pet. Thanks Chanel. And now we'll move on to our second one, Story Cubes. Story cubes are used to provide stimulus for interacting and creating text activities. They can be used by students individually or in small groups and may have themes such as activities, time words, conjunctions and adjectives. In fact, anything that sparks an idea or discussion point can work. Story cubes allow for spontaneous interactions, prompts to manipulate and build language use, use in a variety of contexts, fun language use, and choosing own content. In this example, in groups of three to four, students use a set of cubes with vocabulary relating to hobbies, leisure activities, days, and conjunctions. They roll the cubes and can use the prompts they land on to ask and respond to questions, collectively take turns to add to a story, create the best sentence they can individually or collectively. The cubes can be used all together or could be added progressively as students become more confident with the language on each cube. For example, students may first just talk about their hobbies and preferences using the two cubes with images of activities. Then the cube with time words may be added for students to discuss daily routines. 
and next the cube with conjunctions and a question may be added to extend on their responses using more complex language. You may decide to use the cubes in other ways to give students different experiences using the language. So you may um, add different topics such as food, travel, shopping and celebrations. Cubes with language features such as conjunctions, time and frequency words, adjectives and questions may be added. Use images from the culture of the language to give a cultural perspective to discuss. Consider using images from different perspectives such as Aboriginal or other backgrounds such as disability and think, consider inclusivity. Students may create short stories collectively or create and record stories and share with peers for understanding and feedback. This also allows students to respond in their preferred method of communication supporting inclusivity. Students can create their own cubes, which is great for student engagement as they can talk about their own world and HPGE students can extend themselves with the language. Students can participate in race games to create the longer sentence, almost grammatically well-developed sentence, or use script to write responses to the same prompts from the cubes. Scaffolds, sentence starters and word lists may be provided to support students to participate. Words in the language may also be added to the cubes with the images. We are providing you with a story cube template in the chat to use with your classes that has prompts for a few popular topics. Feel free to use or edit these as you wish. And Chanel, I think we're up to number three now, if I'm counting correctly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's move on to Pictionary. Have you tried playing Pictionary with your students? Pictionary is a classic game of drawing and guessing pictures that lends itself well to a language learning game. It can be a fun and effective way to reinforce vocabulary, improve communication skills and encourage creativity. It also provides opportunities for peer interaction and collaboration, making the learning process more engaging. Let's look at how you can incorporate Pictionary into language learning. It requires little setup, either a pen and scrap paper or mini whiteboards. Alternatively, you can play using the board. It can be played in pairs, small groups, or as a class. Determine the words that you want the students to focus on and have them on flashcards. It is best if they are words that you have covered recently or want to revise. Guesses should be made in the target language. Ideas for categories include food and drink, places around town, things in my house, and careers. If playing as a class, split the team, uh, sorry, split the class into teams. When it's time to play, a player on each team will get a few seconds to look at the word and begin to draw. The object is to draw the item quickly and accurately so that the players on their team can guess what you're drawing before the other team does. Drawing of symbols and numbers is okay, but no writing, not even of single letters, is allowed. For each correct word, the team earns a point. The first team to win 10 points will be the winning team. And there are a number of variations that you can include to maintain student interest and engagement, as well as to make sure it suits your students in your context. To make this activity extra challenging, include not only words, but expressions or other terms they've learnt. If your students are slightly more advanced, you can also use idioms and watch how the students get creative in their drawing interpretations. You can assign different point values for easy, medium and challenging words. To keep the game moving, you can have a timer and limit the time to draw and or guess the word. Once the words have been guessed, you ask students to write the words into their books in a sentence, trying to come up with a new sentence each time. And finally, you can change it up and make it charades. Thank you. Number four, student task boards. Student task boards give students choice, autonomy and ownership of their learning. Activities can be individual or group work and can cover an assortment of outcomes, topics and learning activities. Activities suitable for all learners can be included. They can be designed for a lesson, learning sequence, unit of work or an assessment task. 
student task boards support student choice, differentiation and student engagement. This is an example for a two week period from the stage five Japanese unit of work traveling in Japan. Its purpose is to engage students in language and cultural learning about traveling, focusing on train travel. All outcomes are covered in this task board. Students must complete all mandatory tasks in the blue boxes, then they may select and complete optional ones in the white boxes. Teachers should use the time students are doing the task to interact with, with the students, discussing ideas and choices and giving informal feedback. Students may also complete exit tickets to give to the teacher for feedback during the time the task board is being completed. Examples of mandatory activities on this board include read the article, The Amazing Psychology of Japanese Train Stations, well worth a look if you haven't read it, whether you do the task or not, and make note of behavioural tricks mentioned to share with the class. Students practice phrases for making travel plans on Quizlet, then engage in a role play negotiating travel plans for a day in Japan. An example of an optional activity is the travel agent activity, exchanging information from prompt and question cards about how to travel to places and what they can find in those places. When creating task boards, the world is your oyster in creating variations for your students. Students may identify, negotiate and design their own activities, which allows for students to explore the language from their world and interests. You may include tasks to include intercultural understanding and Aboriginal perspectives, such as exploring places of cultural or historical significance via the language, if the task board was about travel. You can create different task boards for different topics or ones that explore a set of vocabulary and structures. They may be designed for a lesson or a whole learning sequence. Consider designing them to create the most engaging language learning environment possible for all learners with scaffolded and extension activities and some cultural and optional activities. The boards could be part of a class challenge with points awarded for different tasks to build positive class environments with students socialising and supporting each other to learn and apply the language. Encourage students to use scaffolds and word lists and provide these for students that need them, possibly hyperlinked within the task. A template of a generic task board on the topic of food and drinks will be shared in the chat if you would like to try it with your students. Over to you, Chanel. Thank you very much, Karina. On to running dictation. So running dictation is a language learning activity that combines physical movement, collaboration and listening skills. It can be used to reinforce listening, comprehension, vocabulary and grammar. It's a good way to check spelling and pronunciation and makes for great memory training. Select a brief passage or dialogue and create multiple copies. Put the copies up around the walls of the classroom. Divide the students into pairs or small groups. The aim is for one of the students in each pair or group to walk or run, that's why it's known as running dictation, to read the passage on the wall. They remember some of the passage and walk or run back to their partner. They quietly dictate what they have remembered, remembered to their partner who writes it down. They then swap roles. Over several turns, they will build the whole passage. This means they really do have to run back and forth because students will only remember three or four words at a time. The winning pair is the team that finishes first, although you need to check for mistakes. And if there are mistakes, they must keep walking or running to check. Just a note, please read your classroom. Running dictation may not work well if you have a class devoid of energy or with an abundance of energy. When students are remembering, running, then sharing the information to their classmate who will write, read and check with the runner, a lot of interaction is happening. Running dictation is easily adaptable to suit the level of your students. For beginner level students, you can include individual sentences or reduce the number of sentences to two to three, which still might be a challenge. 
you can increase the difficulty with a longer passage or a series of sentences that students, once they have the entire dialogue recorded down, must arrange the sentences into order before showing the teacher for verification. You could play outside, find a good location away from everyone and put the copies of the passage or dialogue up somewhere suitable like a building wall. Thank you. On to you, Karina. I think we might be up to number six. I've lost count now. <laughs> the Find Someone Who activity supports student interaction in the language, can be adapted to different contexts, and builds confidence in applying grammatical structures and vocabulary spontaneously. In Find Someone Who, students complete a table by asking and responding to questions that are used when meeting new people. Students are provided with a profile as their alias and engage in conversations with other students, in exchanging information about names, age, birthday, nationality, language, where people live, and basic likes and dislikes. Great for Unit 1 for those of you that are starting uh, courses new, with new students this year. Students continue interacting until they find someone that matches each criteria in the table. So what other ways could this activity be used? Instead of profiles, you may find meals from different places with different ingredients, flavours, and people who like or dislike them. You may make place profiles with things you can do there or can't do there and different activities for different seasons. This will allow students to use different vocabulary and structures. Students can use the profiles as a stimulus to create a role play on meeting each other for the first time. Students could use this as a scaffold to create their own self profile or a profile for someone who inspires them in their own world. Use the information in the profiles to create different text types to introduce their alias, such as messages, an introductory video, a letter, email, a role play. Analyse the profiles, answering questions and finding out who is sporty, a food junkie, who speaks the same language, comes from the same places and who might make a good friend with justification from the profile information. We're providing you with this activity as a generic English version. The profiles are already created with matches and the answers so that you can apply this activity to any language that you teach. And a note that special attention to inclusivity was made in creating this resource with images representing different cultural backgrounds and disability. Chanel. Thank you very much. So one of the biggest challenges can be getting students to spontaneously talk in the target language, which is why speed chatting may be very useful. We know that they can often be good at talking off task in their first language, but moving them to talk in the target language can take time and persistence. Speed chatting is an activity that is easy to implement and requires no or minimal resources. It involves learners talking about a single topic for a short burst of time before moving on to a new partner and repeating the process. The repetition of a task can result in increased complexity and fluency in speaking. The constant changing of partners means that no two interactions will be identical. So interest is more likely to be sustained. To organize the speed chat, it is best for students to be sitting in pairs facing each other in a row or circle. Discussion topic ready. For example, if you are doing a unit on family and friends, you could ask students to talk about someone in their circle. If required, you could give the topic to students in advance to practice what they want to say or even have a few notes on a page to assist them. Teach students body gestures or body language from the target language to accompany their conversations as well as any requests for clarification or repetition. For example, can you repeat that please? Use a stopwatch. The learner should aim to talk for the duration of the set time. Displaying the time on the board, however, leads to students watching the board rather than looking at their partner. When the time is up, students rotate to a new partner and start the process again. The aim of the activity is for students to communicate their ideas without planning and preparation. Listen out for grammatical or pronunciation errors and address them at a different time. You could include speed chatting weekly, fortnightly, or even less. 
but the more students speed chat, the more comfortable and confident they are likely to become. Speed chatting can be modified to suit your students. You can provide model answers for students to use. You can set the number of sentences for students to, to say. For example, say three full sentences. This assists with students not just giving short or one sentence responses. With strategic planning, you can adjust who students are paired up with. For example, students of similar ability or more competent students with students having difficulty. Divide the class into halves or thirds and allocate students to groups. For advanced students, rather than speak on a set topic, problems can be posed to elicit advice or opinions can be presented for debate. Students may feel hesitant to speak as they have a fear of making mistakes, which can be overheard by others. So playing background music in the target language can help to create a more relaxed atmosphere and to give students the feeling that they're not being listened in on. You can also slightly adjust the time as students become more confident. And finally, you can ask students to bring a picture or prop to support or stimulate their conversation. Thank you, Karina. Thanks. The Tube Advisor activity helps students analyse text to identify language that can be used to give opinions and recommendations. Create a review that may be used in a real world context. Identify where they can find out about places when traveling. And develop intercultural understanding about places, activities, and etiquette. TripAdvisor and similar review sites are a useful tool for students to engage with when considering places to visit and dine at when traveling. This activity is a TripAdvisor review about Tokyo Skytree. It can be used as a mini task progress checkpoint after a learning sequence in a unit of work or as an activity. The review could be given without the Romaji or English versions for more challenge and to develop comprehension strategies. Students complete the Trip Advisor activity in which they engage with the Trip Advisor review of a simple review of Tokyo Skytree as we said, also available in Romaji or English. They complete activities such as highlighting travel-related structures and words and using these to create a review of a place in Australia in simple Japanese or somewhere else in the world. Students also engage in peer feedback in this activity. I'll give you a moment to read some of the questions there. Okay, we'll also be giving you, um, we'll also be sharing this recording so you can go back and look at it later too. There are many variations to the TripAdvisor activity you could provide for your students. So rather than a sightseeing venue, students can review a restaurant, a fun park, or places around the world of interest to them. The class could choose a country, city, or world tour theme and create a class review with each student choosing a different place or activity of interest to them to review. They could choose to do it about their own town for tourists coming to Australia. Students could write an email to the place in the review asking specific questions about the place, such as times, food, prices, or what to do. Feedback on the review could be given with a strategy such as two stars and a wish. What were two good or useful features about the review and something else they would like to know? Students could create a role play or have a conversation with someone about the place in the review. You could use ChatGPT to change the review into a different text type such as a letter or a message and look at how the language and format changes. You could also change the review to be a negative review or a review about a rainy day and see how the language, opinions and activities change. Thanks, Chanel. Thank you very much. A fun classroom activity is for students to create word chains. It is suitable for students of all levels. Teacher, teachers of Japanese may be familiar with them, uh, with the term shiritori, which is a well-known word chain game. 
The idea is that the last letter of the word is the first letter of the next word and so on. For example, if the first word is bear, the next word could be rabbit and then the following word could be tiger and so on. You could have word chains that were related to certain categories like foods or animals, but you could also have free play where students can use any words as long as they can continue the game. Students can play in pairs, in small groups taking turns, or you could do a whole class word chain on the board with students coming up to add words. Creating word chains promotes communication, collaboration and creativity, whilst it is also good for revising and reinforcing vocabulary. You can provide additional support to students where needed, such as allowing them to use their workbooks or providing them with vocabulary lists. To increase the difficulty, consider adding a time limit for each turn. You could also change it up from words to short phrases. Students could also collaborate on making the longest word chain instead of competing each other and could compete with other teams in the class. You could also give students or groups one free pass to use a word from English to continue their word chain if they get stuck. Thank you, Karina. And so self-profile anchor charts can be developed at the start of an early stage for unit of work, like the one you might be working on now or throughout the unit. The self-profile anchor chart gives students support to start communicating about themselves early in their learning a point of reference when meeting people for the first time, an insight into the learning goals of the unit, a place to extend their learning and intercultural understanding about art and etiquette. First students can research different art styles of the country of the target language, for example, anime in Japan, French caricature drawing or Chinese brush and ink style. Then they draw a self portrait in this style. This self-portrait will form the anchor for students to write around at the start of the unit to start communicating immediately and identify the learning goals of the unit. Alternatively, they can add phrases as they learn them throughout the unit. Building on this, students can draw a portrait of a partner in the class and then write the questions to the sentences they made about themselves around it. They can then pair up to ask the questions to their partner writing responses in the third person about them around that person's picture. Variations to the anchor chart could be add script for scripted languages as the script is learnt, find out how to say and write names in the language and add it to the anchor chart, create a profile of the friend or yourself for social media, Use the anchor charts to do a find someone who style activity, as we mentioned before, getting to know each other as classmates. Students could collectively work out the questions they would ask each other to find the matches in the class. Students can have a conversation or create a role play, meeting each other for the first time. Write an introduction message or email or create a TikTok or Instagram post introducing themselves or a friend. They could use the anchor chart um, for other contexts such as places, food, shopping experiences with relevant structures, vocabulary and questions that they can refer to when communicating about these topics. And that's the end of activities and now for a little bit more of an update from our team. Thanks Chanel. Thank you very much. So to finish off today, we would just like to go through a brief languages and culture team update. Our team for 2024 comprises the people you see on the slide. The languages advisors, Karina, Lauren, Kristen, Victoria, Jess, Evelyn and myself provide support to language teachers 7 to 12 in New South Wales schools. In languages, we are now in the enact phase of implementing the new syllabuses with modern languages K-10, classical languages K-10 and Aboriginal languages K-10 implemented in 2024 and Auslan to be implemented in 2026. Our team also oversees the Tunken Centre where Miko and Taka work. You can see them at the bottom right. Elizabeth leads the team as the coordinator languages and culture.
On the planning, programming and assessing languages 7 to 10 page of our website, you will find our programming guidelines, assessment guidelines, unit of work guidelines and sample templates. On this page, you will also find stage four and five generic scope and sequences and units of work and stage four and stage five for French, Japanese, Spanish and Chinese, fully resourced pick up and teach units of work and scope and sequences. And stage five German and Italian, uh, sorry, stage four German and Italian will be coming soon. On our Languages New South Wales YouTube channel, you will find recordings of past statewide staff meetings on implementing the syllabus, as well as recordings of the launch sessions for our Japanese, French, Spanish and Chinese support, and syllabus how-to guides to show you how to navigate Ness's digital syllabus format. Don't forget to complete the microlearning modules, Modern Languages K-10 Syllabus from Planning to Practice in Year 7 to 10 course on MyPL. This is a one hour accredited PD course comprising of three modules. Module one, the Modern Languages K-10 Syllabus. Module two, Developing Intercultural Capability in Modern Languages. And Module three, Task-Based Assessment and Backward Mapping 7 to 10. To access the course, search for AC00390 on MyPL. On the screen, you can see our 2024 network leaders who provide valued support and connections to language teachers across New South Wales. You are warmly invited by our network leaders to join our language teacher networks where you can connect with colleagues and engage in professional learning. There are 18 across New South Wales and meetings are held in week seven or eight, roughly, each term. Please see the contact details of our network leaders on our website and contact them directly if you would like to join. And these networks are open to all language teachers across New South Wales, um, from the department, independent schools, pre-service teachers, community language teachers, everybody is welcome. And finally, we have a very quick evaluation of today's statewide staff meeting and our statewide staff room. We really value your honest feedback to help plan for future statewide staff meetings and support that meets your needs. So if you could take a minute to complete the evaluation, and I promise it really is just a minute or two, um, we would be very, very grateful. And you can access the survey by the QR code on the screen. And while you're just uh, looking at that and hopefully scanning it, um, please remember to feel free to share any ideas or activities with us uh, via email or the Languages Statewide Staff Room that you um, come up with as you navigate our new syllabus spaces. We're always happy to hear from all of you, excited by your ideas. So thank you for joining us today and we will have the recording available in the statewide staff room and on our YouTube channel shortly if you'd like to check out any of the ideas we've presented again. As we said, we look forward to seeing your interaction, ideas, questions, whatever you like in um, the Languages Statewide Staff Room. That's your staff room and we love connecting with you there. Thank you to the team for your support today. I will stop the recording um, just now so that anybody who would like to ask any questions may do so. So just give me a moment. I just had a look in the chat.